I've never seen a street like this before. Well, I earned you barely be so cocky to give me them, yeah. Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland, but it is also a national treasure. There are so many beautiful streets with some amazing architecture in Edinburgh, but one street dominates the tourist scene, and that is the Royal Mile. It's amazing, it's like going back in time. There are so many lovely old buildings in this street, notably the Abbey, the old University of Edinburgh and at the centrepiece St Giles Cathedral which was founded would you believe in the 12th century. And it's got its own secret and very reasonably priced cafe. Along with shops, cafes and a few pubs I've got to say, I think this is one of the most interesting streets I've ever been in. It's amazing. Lots of cashmere. Oh yeah, and kilts. The Museum of Edinburgh is also in this street, in a 16th century restored house, which used to be Huntley's House Museum. This collection relates back to the town's origin and history. Although small, it's probably my favourite. And it was also one of the filming locations for Outlander, which inspired us to come to Scotland in the first place. And right at the end of the Royal Mile is Edinburgh Castle. As you'd expect, Edinburgh Castle is in a dominant position with great views over the city. Castle is actually like a little village all of its own. But it's a huge military museum. There's so many fascinating artefacts. I even found the radiator interesting. But it was probably the dungeon that impressed me most. And at one o'clock, something very special happens. Yeah! Well, the art and the memorabilia from this, which is basically uh, the Scottish War Museum, it, it is incredible. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased I came to see this. At the other end of the Royal Mile, is Holyrood House, which is the royal residence. And in fact, the gates behind me are probably worth more than my house. I couldn't film in Holyrood House because it's still a private residence. And just across the road is the new Scottish Parliament building, which is also very interesting. And um, I'm not quite sure about these, are these keep the people in or to keep the people out. So there is amazing beautiful architecture here in Edinburgh now but a few hundred years ago it wasn't like that and in fact the new city has been built on what used to be a really old grotty smelly town. And you can still see how it was. Mary King's Close which is now a museum is an underground street which still survives after the newer city was built on top of the old. And the guides for this fascinating tour give some interesting stories, especially the one about the teddy bears and why people leave them here.
Not far outside the city is a big ship. That's where we're going now. So you may have guessed it's the Royal Yacht Britannia. Britannia was decommissioned in 1997 after over 50 years serving the Queen, often being the home of the Royals whenever they were abroad. I've got to say, it's not as lavish as what I expected. You do get a feeling that the Queen's going to come on board at any moment and offer you a cup of tea and biscuits. I suppose you do have to remember that most of the most important people in the world have been on this ship at some time or another. It's really a floating town with everything on board and it's a pity that it's just a floating museum now. If you're thinking of doing some shopping the Ocean Terminal shopping mall is right next door to where the Royal Yacht Britannia is moored. There is a lovely river that goes all the way through Edinburgh and it comes out at the East Docks which is near to a place called the Shore. It's a really pretty walk especially early in the morning and I was really surprised at how many birds there are on it. The shore is actually a very popular area. I suppose you could call it the Canary Wharf of Edinburgh. We decided to stay in this area and there's a great choice of restaurants and pubs. Sort of place where you can just sit and watch the world go by. And our favourite pub was Chukta's Landing, if I've said that right. And of course it's a good idea to try the national dishes while you're here, like haggis with nips and tatties. The centre of Edinburgh is absolute chaos for parking, in fact there's hardly any parking and what parking there is, is ex extremely expensive. So. Uh, it's, it's easier to go on the bus or get a taxi. Well, I've tried to pack in as much as I can in the few days I've been here. There's an awful lot of things I haven't seen. There are dozens more museums, interesting buildings and places to visit here in Edinburgh. You certainly need more than a couple of days. Even the railway station is stylish. We considered going to Edinburgh on the train, but the tickets were so expensive, it was actually cheaper to fly from Bristol to Edinburgh. And we hired a car for the duration for the same price. In our next Scottish adventure we visit the Highlands of Scotland where we'll be having a brief visit to Inverness, a huge castle, a distillery and some fantastic scenery. As you know most of our content is focused on Turkey but we do travel abroad and when we go we will be making films about the places we visit. So that's it from here in Edinburgh. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss where we go next. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.